the lessons for the Requiem Mass on the day of burial. <clears throat> the epistle is taken from the first letter of St. Paul uh, to the Thessalonians, chapter 4. A brethren, we would not have you ignorant, considering those who are asleep, uh, lest you should grieve, even as others who have no hope. Uh, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so with him God will bring those also who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For this we say to you in the word of the Lord, that we who live, who survive until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. But the Lord himself, with cry of command, with, voice of, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise up first. Uh, then we who live, who survive, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds <clears throat> to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Please stand for the Gospel. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, O oh Lord, if thou had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise up at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he die, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Dost thou believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Thus far are the words of today's Gospel. <clears throat> uh, dear friends in Christ, again, thank you for coming uh, to pay our last respects uh, to a great hero of the Catholic faith, Father Eugene Haidt. And at the beginning, I would like to thank uh, Father uh, Brendan Tardis, OSP, uh, who gave Father the last uh, rites uh, the day that he died. Uh, he was on vacation and uh, came in haste uh, to administer the last rites uh, to Father. So many thanks to, to Father Brendan and also to uh, Father Heights' uh, niece, uh, Georgie, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Georgie Swetzig, I think. Um, uh, Georgie, his niece, who, who attended Father's uh, first Mass <clears throat> after his ordination in 1959 uh, at St. Luke's in Woodburn, and then also assisted at Father Heights' uh, last Mass. Uh, at, at her home where she was taking care of him. And so she was present at both his first and his last Mass. And as a good nurse, she provided excellent uh, care uh, for Father during his lengthy illness, uh, during his battle, rec attempting to recover from his stroke, and then against the cancer that finally, to which he finally succumbed. So many thanks to Georgie for her uh, kindness to Father and for the good care that she provided him and enabling the rest of us to stay in contact with Father uh, during his last days. Uh, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, dear friends in Christ, <clears throat> again, we celebrate uh, the Requiem Mass, uh, and we celebrate it in the traditional Latin rite, which uh, Father Hyde courageously returned to. As so many priests, he went along uh, with the changes that were introduced after the last council, that were implemented in the name of that council, but in, which in fact contradict 
uh, the provisions of that council, which in the Constitution on the Liturgy, it said that Latin was to be preserved in the Roman Rite, and that the rites were not to be changed. And yet this is what uh, was introduced uh, in 1970, was a new rite of Mass, thus contradicting uh, the Constitution on the Liturgy of the Council. And so Father Hyde did go along with this for a number of years, as most priests did, thinking that this was the will of, of God. But as our Lord said, by their fruits you shall know them. And the fruits of these changes in the church, in its worship, in its doctrine, these fruits have not been good. We simply have to look at the situation in the church and in the world today and say that these changes that were introduced have not been good for, for the Catholic Church and for the Catholic faithful. Instead, we see confusion, we see division all around us. And Father recognized this uh, crisis. Uh, he said the turning point for him uh, was when the American bishops introduced and indeed required a communion in the hand. So this to him was, this was the signal that this, these reforms uh, were not the will of God, that they were not for the good of the church, that it was undermining. He could see as a, as a good priest, he could see that these changes were undermining the faith of Catholics their belief in the real presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, their belief in the sacrifice of the Mass, 